Hello again, friends and family of Cartoon Universe, Deep Cut here with something a little new for all of you. Bee and Puppy Cat is an amazing cartoon series that doesn't get a lot of discussion, but with the sequel series expected to be released sometime this year, I thought there wouldn't be a better time to make a video about it. For those who don't know, Bee and Puppy Cat is a crowdfunded animated series from Frederator Studios that later found a home on Verve. They released 10 episodes over the years, and then were greenlit for a second season that is currently being animated in Japan. The show follows Bee, a young girl living in her small apartment on her small island, and Puppy Cat, a strange creature who fell from the sky. Puppy Cat takes Bee on wacky adventures in space doing temp work to help make money for the two of them. It's a great show, and if you haven't checked it out, you seriously should. And you should also click away now, because we're about to get into spoiler territory. Alright, you ready? So, at the end of episode 10, we learned that B wasn't exactly human, but seemed to be some sort of machine. There was a lot of foreshadowing to set this up, even back in the original pilot. There were her dreams, her fear of water, her super strength, and Deckard even mentioned that she was unusually heavy, as if her bones were made of metal. The question we are left with, however, is whether or not she is an android, which is a robot built to look like a human, or a cyborg, which has both organic and mechanical parts, generally implying that the person was once a human who had machinery added to keep them alive. My personal theory is that B is in fact a cyborg, that she was born an ordinary human girl, and that her father later turned her into a cyborg to keep her from dying at a very young age. There is a lot of evidence for this throughout the series, so let's buckle in and take a look. The first big piece of evidence that B does in fact have a human side is her fascination with food. Humans need to eat, robots obviously do not. You can see throughout the entire series that eating is something that Bee enjoys, though it isn't actually shown as something she needs, so much as something she craves outside of the pilot. A lot of details change from the pilot to the series, and even though it did foreshadow her mechanical side, I would take her stomach grumbling with a grain of salt here. Another thing to consider is that the show has a massive fantasy element that doesn't restrain itself to realistic concepts, so it isn't too far-fetched to say that if she is just a robot, that her father didn't just program her to love food to seem more human. So this is in and of itself hard to use as concrete proof, but it is only just the beginning. Another very human quality that B has is that she dreams. The dreams seem to have some prophetic qualities, and often hint at her mechanical nature. But all in all, dreaming is something humans do, not machines. This is seen not just in the pilot, but in episode 2 as well. As I said before, in a show that has such heavy fantasy and sci-fi elements as Bee and Puppy Cat, it is possible that she is simply programmed to dream, or this is a robotic equivalent of dreaming, an unintended consequence of her programming but I am going to say that this points more to her having a human origin, especially since sleeping itself is a very human thing. In the same episode, we can also see that B does choke, showing that she does breathe, something a full robot wouldn't need to do. At the very end of the episode, B gives Puppy Cat her jacket from when she was a baby, meaning that she grew into an adult. The jacket also happens to say, Poo Monster. Why would her father program a robot with an unnecessary function such as that? Skipping ahead to episode 4, we see that B does have a birthday. While possible that this is just references to the day she was built, there seems to be a lot of evidence in this episode that contradicts that idea. First and foremost, she carries a photo around of herself from when she was a child. The arcade was open when she was a kid, but it has clearly been abandoned for a very long time now. It seems like it's been shut down for longer than B should have been alive. Back in episode 2, Cass notes that it's weird that B never grows up. We are meant to take this figuratively, but it calls a lot into question. If Cass and Deckard have never seen B age, it would imply that she's been stuck this way for a very long time, meaning that her father didn't program her to age naturally. Now, perhaps the most interesting evidence that B was once human was a simple line she says in the middle of the episode. After finding her favorite game, B notes that her father came up with it when she got sick. There are several interesting things about this line. First, a robot shouldn't be getting sick. Second, the way she words it implies that it was a very serious singular illness, 
You wouldn't say, my father came up with it when I got sick, in reference to inventing an entire video game when you had a cold. You would say, my father came up with it when I got sick once. This indicates to me that B got ill, terminally ill, and her father began replacing her with machinery to keep her alive. Her father got the idea for the game when she was sick, and something the bunny in the game says is rather interesting. She asked for the player's help to fill her dark heart with stars. In this preview for Season 2, we can see that B appears to have some sort of mechanical heart. In this episode, we see that each year she gets to eat a very peculiarly shaped candy, one that looks like a star. Fast forward to the end of the season, and when B is being repaired, the machine is sending glowing versions of these candies, these little stars, into her. Is it possible that her father came up with this game mechanic based off of how he fixed his daughter? So far, the only information I found that contradicts the idea that she is a cyborg is that B's insides do seem to be entirely mechanical, not just partially. Still, with the evidence presented, I think that the most that means is that B was born human and had her consciousness transferred into a machine later on. What's important here is that she was human at one point, not built as a robot from the very beginning. Hopefully, this story will be confirmed in Season 2, which is coming to Verve sometime this year, according to all the sources that I've seen so far. If you're interested in watching more of Bee and Puppy Cat, consider getting a subscription when the time comes out to support the show. And if you made it this far and you still haven't seen it, please go check out all the episodes. They are available for free here on YouTube. Just search for Bee and Puppy Cat. Just make sure you watch the pilot first, because if you skip that and then go straight into episode 2, which is listed as episode 1, you're going to miss a lot of important information. That's all I got for you guys today, and I'll see you in the next video.